Today we're gonna make three incredible vegan meals. They are packed with flavor, but they are perfect for lazy days because they require 10 minutes or less of active cook time. We're gonna start with a sausage and greens pasta. This is a really hearty dinner option that the whole family will enjoy. We'll start this recipe by bringing a large pot of salted water to a boil and adding about six ounces of pasta. You wanna cook the pasta just until it's al dente. And while the pasta cooks, we'll make everything else for this meal. Heat a large nonstick saute pan over medium high heat. While it's heating up, prepare your favorite vegan sausage. I'm using Beyond Meat Sausage today, which you can crumble up with your hands, but if you're using a different variety, you might wanna slice it into rounds. I've also made this recipe with field roast vegan sausage and it's really good. Add the sausage to the hot pan and you can cook it in a bit of olive oil if needed, but there should be a decent amount of fat in the sausage itself. And while the sausage is cooking, we'll make our pasta sauce. To keep this a quick weeknight friendly meal, I'm using jarred marinara sauce, about two cups worth, but we are going to amp up the flavor with a few extra ingredients. A tablespoon of tomato paste for a deep concentrated tomato flavor, oregano, and a tablespoon and a half of nutritional yeast for a slight cheesy kick. And just go ahead and stir everything up until it's combined. Meanwhile, continue cooking the sausage until it's well browned and it starts to get nice and crispy. If your sausage is the kind that crumbles, you can go ahead and use a spatula to break it up as you go. When the sausage is done to your liking, toss in a bunch of greens. I never measure this out, but I usually use three to four large handfuls of baby spinach or baby kale, which cook down really quickly. And you wanna cook the greens until they're almost wilted but still bright green, about 30 to 60 seconds. Next, we'll pour in that marinara sauce mixture we just made, and you might need to reduce the heat to prevent it from bubbling. And then I use a slotted spoon to directly transfer the hot pasta into the warm sauce and toss everything together. I do this because when you heat pasta in the same pan as the sauce, you're gonna get a much better flavor and texture than if you were to just pour the sauce onto a bowl of plain pasta. Finish the pasta with a little bit of red pepper flakes or black pepper or both, and a little chopped parsley if you have it. This tastes like a restaurant quality meal. It's so good. Those flavor boosters took the marinara sauce over the top and because it's so easy and quick, like 10 minutes, now you have no excuse to order takeout. Next up, we're gonna make a cauliflower white bean soup. It is creamy and comforting yet wholesome. It's got a lot of protein and healthy fats. And best of all, it is so quick and fuss free and hands off to make because we're gonna put everything in the Instant Pot, just dump it in there. But if you don't have an Instant Pot, I have included stovetop instructions in the free PDF guide, which you can find linked down below. The only prep work you need to do for this recipe is to cut up a cauliflower into florets. And the easiest way to do that is to run a knife around the underside until the stem comes out. Then take a paring knife to loosen the florets from the stem and you should be able to now easily pluck the florets off. There's no need to cut these florets into small pieces, but if you have a really large floret, go ahead and cut it in half. And for the cleanest cut, cut through the stem at the bottom instead of cutting through the floret. I'm making a half batch of this soup today, so I'm just gonna use half of a large cauliflower. Oh wait, one more prep step, peel and roughly chop up some garlic. That should take 30 seconds. And now we're just gonna dump all of the ingredients into the Instant Pot. We need two cups of vegetable broth, the cauliflower florets, the chopped garlic, one can of drained and rinsed cannellini beans, a half cup of raw cashews for some creaminess, a few sprigs of fresh thyme, a sprig of rosemary, and a bay leaf for some woodsy notes, a few tablespoons of nutritional yeast for some savory depth of flavor, and of course, some salt and pepper to season. Give everything a stir, close up that Instant Pot, and we'll use the pressure cook setting for seven minutes on this soup. When that seven minute timer beeps, you'll do a quick pressure release to let up all of the steam. Now the only thing left to do is a blend up the soup. If you've got an immersion blender like this, go ahead and directly blend it up. Whoops, open the, open the pot. If you don't have one of these, if you don't have an immersion blender, you can transfer the soup to a stand blender. Just scoop out the whole herb sprigs and blend the soup up. An immersion blender makes this a very easy one pot meal that's great for cleaning up. But if you want a really silky texture in this soup, I recommend using a stand blender. Once the soup is blended up and super creamy, add in a few squeezes of lemon juice and season with a bit more salt. We're gonna finish the soup with three ingredients that are gonna add a lot of flavor, lemon zest, crushed red pepper, and extra virgin olive oil. When you make the soup, I actually encourage you to try it before you add these ingredients and then try it after. It really does make a huge difference. It takes a soup that is really quite good and something you'd be happy to eat into an amazing soup that will wow your family. The amount of effort that goes into the soup is like zero and the taste is like a 10. So in terms of work, ratio to reward, is that a thing? Rate work to work reward? 
effort reward. The effort reward ratio is really, really good and it is really healthy and freezer friendly. So it's something you can make all winter long. For this last recipe, we're gonna make miso tahini butter roasted sweet potatoes. I love this recipe because all you need to do is take your sweet potatoes, prick them, pop them whole in the oven. While they're baking, you can go for a run or watch TV. And then a few minutes before they're done, we'll make the miso tahini butter, which takes five minutes. We're gonna start the miso tahini butter with our softened vegan butter, about two and a half tablespoons, and drizzling in a tablespoon of tahini for a nutty flavor and creamy texture, along with a half tablespoon of white miso paste for that intense umami flavor. And for a bright, summery citrus pop of flavor, zest about half of a lime. And then we'll cut the lime in half and add about two teaspoons or so of the lime juice. Next, add a half teaspoon of toasted sesame oil for bold nuttiness and just a smidgen of agave nectar for sweetness. Finally, for a little heat, add in a few pinches of red pepper flakes. Grab a fork or a whisk and mash until the mixture is really smooth. If the butter feels like it's almost starting to melt, like it's too runny, go ahead and pop it in the fridge for a few minutes to chill. And when your sweet potatoes are done baking, just slice them in half and lather them up with this luscious, flavorful miso tahini butter. You can also bake the sweet potatoes ahead of time if you're doing meal prep and store them covered in the fridge for a few days. Then when it's time to eat, just reheat the potatoes and add the miso tahini butter. And to give these a little protein, we're gonna spoon a few handfuls of chickpeas on top, or you can really use any plant protein you like, such as lentils or tofu. And for some extra flavor, zest a little more lime on top, sprinkle with sesame seeds, which are gonna complement the flavors from the tahini and the sesame oil, and add a sprinkling of fresh cilantro leaves. These sweet potatoes are so comforting and flavor packed. And best of all, it took like five active minutes of cooking. For more really quick and really easy vegan meals, stay tuned for this video, five ingredient meals that actually taste good.